morning everybody, Glenn Samuel from Sniper Photography. Today I'm going to show you all what's in my landscape photography bag. Okay, welcome back guys, thanks for joining me here at Sniper Photography. Look, today I thought I'd show you what's in my landscape photography bag as I often get asked what gear do I use and how do I carry it and, and why do I use it. Well, today I thought I'd take the opportunity to show everyone out there and answer some of those questions. So to get it started, the first thing we must show you is the camera, the camera that I use. I use various cameras, but on most occasions I only use one because of, uh, I'm trying to cut down weight and I use heavy equipment or heavy cameras. So let's get it started here. The camera I use most of the time is the Canon 5D Mark III. Now, this camera is an absolute beast. I mean, I've actually flogged it to death. It's been wet in, in, in rain and waterfalls. Um, I've knocked it against branches and logs and trees and so forth and it just keeps on backing up. It's been, it's been a phenomenal camera. I have a 5D Mark IV and a 6D uh, Mark II, but I tend to use the 5D Mark III probably because it's, it's my favourite and that's the camera I mostly use. Now it's also, it's also fitted with a battery grip because um, I like to use, shoot with two batteries. I don't want to be mucking around changing batteries and so forth. So I've got plenty of usage or plenty of shots out of two batteries. So it just cuts down a bit of time out in the field. The next thing obviously I, I use is lenses. Now the lenses are very important. Obviously you, you, you can't do this job without the lenses. And I use three lenses, but I don't use the three all the time. Um, I'll start off with the 17 to 40 f4. Incredible wide angle lens. Um, people use a 16 to 35 2.8. Um, I prefer to use this 17 to 40. It doesn't have image stabilization, but I don't need that because I'm on a tripod. I'm not landscape photography, we're not looking at fast shutter speeds. I'm looking at slower shutter speeds because I'm shooting it around anywhere between f8 and f16 or f11 mainly, and that brings my shutter speed down well below 1 60th of a second. Excuse me. So, 17 to 40, great wide angle lens. You've got to know how to use it. It's great when you've got foreground element. You can get close and everything just looks fantastic. And it's a way of, it's sort of like intimate landscape photography. And that's what I use for that. The 17 to 40 F4 Canon L lens. The next lens I use is the 24 to 105 F4 once again. Heavier than the 17 to 40, it's a beast, it's a big lens, it's a heavy lens, but it served me well over the time. Um, a lot of my landscape shop, shots are actually taken with this with the 24 to 105. I was up in the mountains just over here last weekend, and that's what I used the 24 to 105. Um, it has image stabilization, but I turn it off. Um, if you're, you're photographing landscapes, and you've got your camera on a tripod, turn your image stabilization off because the camera will start to hunt and uh, any movement, it, it just, it can, it can ruin your images. So don't really necessarily need image stabilization, but this lens comes with it. It's the 24-105 f4 once again. I don't need a fast lens for landscape photography. So a really, really good lens this. The third lens I use, not often, but Sometimes I bring it out, all depends where I'm going or what the location is, and that's the 70 to 200 f4 once again. Another beast of a lens. This lens is an absolute icon for Canon, uh, both in the f4 and 2.8. Uh, I've used this for sports photography, portraits, it's excellent, but for landscape photography, when I just haven't got the reach of the lens, the other two lenses, this on the full frame works brilliantly. If I'm going to a location and this isn't going to be enough, I've got a 7D Mark II, which is Canon's crop professional body. I'll use that because it extends the focal length by 1.6. So this 200 becomes over 300 and without really any image um, degrading. So sometimes I use it. Uh, I should be using it more, quite frankly, but um, it's just a great lens, the 70 to 200 Canon L F4. So they're the three lenses that I use. Now there's other things that we need in landscape photography. Now you don't need all this gear, but um, there are things that make your life a lot easier. And one of them is this. It's a Hoodman loop. Now, <coughs> excuse me, this is invaluable. About $140 I think I paid for it. And what it is, you put it at the back of the camera like so, 
you look at it like that and you can pinpoint um, how well your um, focusing is. It's called a Hoodman loop. I suggest anybody in photography grab one of these, especially if you've got a, a, a live view screen at the back of the camera, the most cameras have these days. This is invaluable. I, I always use it um, to get my focusing pin sharp in the landscape. It's just an invaluable piece of, piece of equipment, the Hoodman loop, well, really well worth the money. Um, the next thing I carry is spare SD cards. Now, this is an SD card holder. Um, the reason why I like to carry these is because even though I format my cards, um, there's a chance that that card can collapse. So I like to carry spare SD cards. There they are there. They're in a little case. And it comes with me all the time. You wouldn't believe it. I've never had to use these other cards. The cards I buy are high grade cards but you just never know and I don't want to be caught out three or four or five hours away from home when one of these cards collapses so this is probably worth having just in case and, a spare, and you should always have spare SD cards. Um, the next thing I use is this. It's a black cloth and what I do when I'm shooting out in the landscape and I'm, I'm using slow shutter speeds to stop any light from getting into the back of the viewfinder I just put the cloth over like that like so and that stops any light from getting in through the viewfinder which can uh, really play or havoc create havoc with your images so a black cloth is very very useful to hang over the back of your camera Nikon cameras have a, have a little dial that you can shut or to close the uh, viewfinder, which is great. Canon don't have that. Well, not that I know of. I don't, I'm not on my cameras. So I just put a black cloth over it and it seems to work. The next thing is this. Now, it's not a shower cap. We'll get into that in a minute. This is a cover, a rain cover for the camera bag. And the reason why I use that most of the time is if I'm going into a location, especially a waterfall area or a rainforest or lush vegetation, and it's been raining for the last three or four days, the ground's going to be wet. So if you have to take your bag off, you don't want to put your bag on wet ground. So this, when you put your bag inside this, it's perfect. It protects your bag from the moisture. Very, very simple. Worth three bucks, you know. Very, very simple. The next thing that I use is this. A cable release. Okay. I use this, sometimes I use the um, self time on the camera, but sometimes I'd like to use this. Um, not worth, don't cost you much money, but another invaluable piece of kit. Um, if you can grab one of them, make sure that fitting there, I don't know if you can see that, fits the model camera you're using. That's a cable release. It's a, a piece of kit that's um, great to have. Next is a rocket blower for about six dollars seriously you can't beat this I always have one of these in my camera bag you just it's good to clean the sensor I mean you grab the camera like that blow all the dust out and it's just a safeguard really you've got to have one of these I believe you should have one of these every photographer should have one of these it's a rocket blower and it cleans dust off your camera and sensor and mirror the next thing I use is this. Now here's the shower cap. It's all of this. Plain shower cap. I use this if I'm in the rain or I'm close to a waterfall and the spray's hitting the camera or doing seaside landscape photography. I put this over the camera like so and it protects the camera. These are little things that help um, save you a lot of grief actually. So, you know, you go to a hotel if you go away, you always get some of these. Just take them. Um, they're going to throw them out anyway. But yeah, a shower cap over your camera, like so, and it just protects your camera from all wet moisture, really. Now the fun part. Filters. A lot of people don't like using filters. They like to use um, Lightroom and Photoshop, especially Photoshop if they want to, to correct um, light and colour and saturation, and you can do that in Lightroom anyway. But 
I still like to use filters, I'm old school, and I use the Nissi brand of filters. Um, yes, they are expensive, they're, they are expensive um, filters, but they're very, very good, and um, I suggest if you, in the landscape photography, you want to bring the sky down, the sky's too bright, it's going to be a major highlight in your image, get an Nissi filter or a good quality filter like a Lee. Uh, you know, there, there are some good brands out there. It all depends how much you want, want to spend. You can get resin or glass. Um, I'll use both resin and glass. Um, these are my filters here. Up here. I've got six stops, ten stop NDs all through here. I've got three and six half grade filters. I did a, um, a video not long ago on how to use these filters, so um, they're my filters. I, I, I do use them quite often, especially if I want to slow the shutter speed right down or I want to reduce the brightness of the sky. I use a half grade, either a six, or a three or a six. And sometimes I use a three stop half grade with a uh, eight or 10 stop ND filter if I want to really smooth that water out. So filters are in my kit all the time. So half grades and full neutral density filters up to 10 stops. Uh, the brackets that hold it, the Nissi bracket, um, that actually fits inside. My lens is a 77mm thread, the 70 to 200 is 67mm, so I've got a, an adapter ring for that particular lens, but that's what I use. I also use, this is a Nissi Landscape Circular Polarizer, absolutely an bomb of a lens, uh, a filter. It brings out the greens and the um, the moss on the rocks, and it and fits into this filter here. You can actually you can actually turn it like so. There's a ring there, and it turns so uh, light to dark. That is um, really well worth the money. I know you pay a lot of money for the Nissi equipment, and same with the Lee filter system. Um, there are other brands out there, but with filters. Um, how much you spend really dictates what sort of result or quality you're going to get with your images by using good quality filters. So there are the filters and the holders that I use. Um, there's another um, filter that I use. Now this is... I never, I never thought I'd buy um, this brand, but I have. And it's a KNF Concept variable circular um, neutral density filter. Now that's it there. Right. So if I put this up to the camera, you'll see how, how it works. We'll go dark in a moment. That's eight stops right there. So it goes from three to eight stops. It's a neutral density circular polarizer. Now the funny thing about this is when I use this filter in say a, um, a waterfall area the greens aren't as strong as using the Nissi um, circular polarizer. So there's different circular polarizers for different applications. But I have to say for around about $120 this, this is pretty good and um, I was quite surprised by the quality uh, that I get out of this, this filter. Um, a lot of people think, well, with the circular um, neutral densities or circular polarizers, you do get a, what they call a cross um, or like a big netting. With this, you don't. I don't know how they've done it, but they have, they have done this and it works really good. So that's the KNF um, circular neutral density filter. So I do use that as well. Um, I think that's about it really in this bag. Um, I don't think there's anything else really to to show you. Um, oh yes there is. These. You know when you buy something from the shops or electronic equipment and you get these little sachets? Don't throw them out. These are fantastic to have in your um, camera bag because they get rid of any moisture that might be, in, might be trapped inside your bag. So if ever you you know, you buy anything electrical and you've got these, 
keep them. Doesn't matter how big they are, just keep them and they, they, they work. I'm telling you, these do work. They absorb any moisture in your bag near your equipment. So I always leave one, of the, one or two of these in um, the bag. So that's about it, really. I, um, I don't carry much gear when I'm with me. I also have a tripod, which is being used to film this video. Um, but I have done a, a video on that um, k &F tripod. Um, you just search through the YouTube channel Sniper Photography and you'll find that video. Or I might put the link up to, this, to that video on this video. So um, other than the tripod, um, that's the equipment that I use and it serves me very well. I mean, you don't need all this, but at the end of the day, it's what I need and that's what I use. So uh, if you've got any questions about equipment or even how to use the filters, please drop a line down below. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell next to it so you don't miss anything. So that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. And as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends, but most of all, you have fun and keep smiling. Bye for now.